Next on Broadway Profiles, he's a talent like few others. Andrew Rannells is here to talk about The Prom on Netflix and a whole lot more. Plus, Broadway couples in quarantine, how Orfe and Andy Carl have gotten creative during this shutdown, and a little bit later, becoming Princess Jasmine. You'll meet one of the stars of Aladdin, Ariel Jacobs. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is Broadway Profiles, presented by Broadway.com. Welcome to Broadway Profiles. I'm your host, Tamsin Fidel. Well, you know, not all Broadway stars find Hollywood success, and not all movie stars hit big on Broadway. But Andrew Rannells is one of those rare actors who can do it all. Let's go ahead and send it over to Paul Wontorek with a look at the story. Hi there, Paul. Thanks, Tamsin. He is definitely a dual threat. The two-time Tony nominee shot the stardom with the Book of Mormon. Since then, it's been one hit after another, on the stage and on the screen. In fact, right now he's starring in not one, but two Broadway-inspired movies on Netflix, The Boys in the Band and The Prom. Take a look. I'm a big fan of The Prom on Broadway and a big fan of the movie now, and they're different, obviously, but I was really happy to see, you know, that not much was really lost, you know? I think Ryan Murphy loved the show and yeah. loved the message and didn't want to mess with it too much, but he's so, he has such a good eye for those things, obviously, of like when to expand and when not to expand. And introducing yeah. Tracy Ullman's character as, as yeah, James's yeah. mother, I think was, it was such a, you know, a, a necessary and a really smart move. Um, and we had that leeway in the film that, you know, they, you can't really get into in a Broadway show all the time, but we had the opportunity. Come on, kids, and let me hear it. You do an entire number in a mall. It looks like there were bystanders. Were there actually yeah. like regular people just sort of like shopping who were like, oh, yeah. they're filming a musical number over there. Yeah, we had this mall in Northridge, California that um, we obviously had a huge chunk of it sort of for us, but the reality was the mall was still open. Right. Um, and this was in February, I guess. Okay. So people, people were still just shopping. Um, so yes, you will see people who are just like, what's happening down there? Um, what are they doing? Who is that person? One of the big things I think about being in your position at this point in your career, which is when you get to meet people as real people, um, you know, and when you grow up, everyone's sort of like this, this starry icon and you kind of see them just struggling with the pandemic. Like everyone is. Yeah. Um, so that makes me think of being on the set of the prom because wow, you got a lot of stars in that movie with you. It was a lot of starry people. Um, but that was like the big, um, I think, realization when we were in rehearsals was that they're just people. So when we were learning all of that choreography and seeing, you know, Meryl and Nicole really like dive into it, just like the rest of us were. And there was no, you know, they had to, they were working their asses off learning all of this choreography. And so was I, like, it, here we all are. So we had a really kind of traditional musical theater rehearsal that I think that's the time where the cast really bonds. And so in yeah. a lot of ways, by the time we got to set, it felt like we were already a team and we were already a pretty tight group. And the sort of intimidation factor um, eventually wore off. Do you have any favorite Meryl Streep movies or moments from that amazing career? Like what jumps out to you? Well, I mean, all of the, you know, I tortured her with so many questions about so many things, but we talked about, uh, you know, that was the thing. We spent hours and hours together on the set that like we had a lot of downtime. And the thing that I was really struck by on the first day that sometimes when you're, when you're filming something and they say cut, all of the actors sort of scatter and oftentimes, you know, people go back to their dressing rooms or their trailers or whatever, but Nicole and Meryl just sat with us. Like oh, they wow. just, they sat down in these chairs and um, asked questions and, you know, got to know each other and, and Meryl and James and Nicole and I really spent a lot of time just like chatting. A Broadway power couple in quarantine, Orfe and Andy Carl have been Tony nominees, Grammy nominees, and now a new chapter. We talked about how they've gotten creative during the Broadway shutdown. First of all, how are you? Because we were we were talking about doing a segment of couples in quarantine, and I went, "Oh, I know the couple." So, <laughs> how 
<laughs> How's it been? You know. Uh, I mean, this is not something you wish and pray for, for, <laughs> for togetherness and bonding time. Oh, like this is great, but you know, and we're just talking about like how, how do we have date nights anymore? It's sort of like, it's have been inside. Creatively, how are you doing? Because I feel like creativity comes from this. There were always things that we wanted to do and we thought about doing and we thought, oh, maybe we'd be good at this. Maybe this is something we should, you know, explore. But this forced our hands to explore other avenues. So we optioned a book, we wrote a pilot, we write a lot of stuff. He's writing a movie and we're good at it. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> But that's great, but it's nice to have that time because you, you always do ask that question, like what if I have the time to, so talk about the book that you optioned because that's that's kind of exciting. We have it's show and tell. Yeah. We optioned this book called The Dancer by Eric Bernat and about 20 pages in, 20 pages in, I was like, oh, I'm gonna figure out a way to option this book because you know, I'm such a mogul. Right. Um, literally was like, I'm going to option this book. I'm going to turn this book into a series, into an anthology, into some like, you know, really kind of noir-y, uh, Netflix-y, you know, whatever. And hopefully sometime in the near future, after all of this, we'll be able to cast and start shooting and, you know, making jobs for a lot of amazing artists. And that's the most important thing right now, because I know there are so many, so many artists that are trying to figure out what, you know, what's next. Yeah, yeah, we're, uh, we're we're recruiting a lot of people. I've been writing a lot of music too, and uh, I, I call my friends and I'll, I'll throw them a couple bucks on Venmo. Like, thanks, I appreciate it. I don't have much, but here you go, and they're happy to do it. Um, I think that's the thing. Something with like with the dancer, the book, um, and with writing music, that kind of stuff. People are um, chomping at the bit to be creative, and if if we can be a part of that and, and sort of giving people an outlet to uh, be creative that way, it's amazing. And the dancer is so packed with great characters. It's going to be one a great epic story about uh, New York uh, during it's, the 80s. It's like the 50s and the 80s. It's like crazy. What about music? You said you're writing music and had you had you always done that or no? Done yeah. it for a long time. Really long I mean, time. obviously we've been musicians. Right for our careers. So I've just been real busy with shows. And now that I'm not, uh, it's it gives me time to really go after the passions. You guys just sing during the day, like if you're in the kitchen making dinner, do you just... Past couple of weeks, we've been uh, waking up every morning and to get our butts out of bed, we dance. A and lot. It, like a, one, one, so, one dance track. And we're in the <laughs> living room dancing, the dog staring at us. But I tell you what, I have a better outlook on the day. Seriously. I, and I and I hate it. I wake up like, oh, okay, click. <laughs> so I love that. So random. It's something we just said, oh, let's try this. Let's elevate the mood. Let's elevate the spirit. It, it, it works. It's a pain in the everything, but it works. You're like a Broadway thought leader. <laughs> Theater fans across the country last month celebrated the very best of Broadway with a televised primetime special. That show, by the way, raised more than $3 million for Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. The two-hour special featured performances from some of our very favorite musicals, including Jagged Little Pill. Inspired by the songs of Alanis Morissette, the show features some of Broadway's fastest rising stars. Stars like Lauren Patton. Broadway.com correspondent Charlie Cooper had the chance to chat with her. So of course, congrats are in order for you because you're a Tony nominee for Jagged Little Pill and you just earned a Grammy nomination for being on the cast recording. What does that news feel like to you? Like, did you imagine when you first started in theater that you would have such a great impact um, within the community? No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, well, I feel like when you first start in theater, you just think about the people who've had such a great impact on you, you know, I mean, mm. that's what, that's what you think about is like, oh, if I could, um, if I could do work like they do, you know, if I could make somebody feel the way that they've made me feel. And so it, it is, it, it's a, a strange, beautiful thing to then kind of know that, that you've become that for somebody else, even just one person. You're like, wow, I can't believe because I know what that feels like on the other end. Do you miss singing You Oughta Know and getting that like crowd applause at the end? Like, what does that feel like for you? And, and do you miss that feeling? Oh yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's unlike anything. 
and it's not something that you adjust to or get used to. So I, I, I do miss it because it wasn't like I was like, oh yeah, this thing again, you know? Because the experience of connecting with audience through that song is unlike anything I've had uh, in my career. I've sung the song plenty of times in this pandemic and it's never quite the same without it being at the Broadhurst and, and with a full audience. There's still a lot more for us to talk about on this edition of Broadway Profiles. Up next, we're talking to Tony winner Laura Benanti about her new HBO documentary, Homeschool Musical. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and you're watching Broadway Profiles. When Broadway reopens, one of the shows we're most looking forward to seeing again is Disney's Aladdin. The show features classic songs and new favorites, plus an incredible set that includes a magic carpet ride, not to mention top-tier talent like Ariel Jacobs. And when Broadway returns, so will Ariel as Princess Jasmine. Take a look, though, at how she transforms into the princess in this week's character study. Jasmine is the coolest princess because she's compassionate and strong and independent and she stands up for what she believes in but she also is really kind and empathetic. She is not a princess in the way that people I think typically think of princess. Uh, I don't like to play her that way at least when I got cast as the role I thought okay she's a princess but what is she like inside? How is she a real person with real feelings and how can I come into this role really just experiencing what I would do in this situation not how does a princess act or how does a princess walk you can't think of that stuff because you want it to be real I have some gorgeous costumes they are covered in crystals and sequins she really has her own style the costumes are beautiful very heavy <laughs> because of the crystals so learning how to dance with all of this extra weight and the full long skirt without tripping on it took a lot of rehearsal. <laughs> I don't actually feel it's real until I put on the crown, until I put the tiara on. Because before that I see myself in the mirror, but the second the crown goes on, I see a princess in the mirror. I've transformed into someone else. From that moment on, I'm, I'm Jasmine, I'm not myself. Laura Benanti's new documentary, Homeschool Musical, Class of 2020, is now streaming on HBO Max. Let's send it back to Broadway.com's editor-in-chief, Paul Wontorek. Thanks, Tamsin. It's inspired by Laura's Sunshine Songs Twitter movement in 2020. The film focuses on seven theater kids who face their school musical cancellations in the wake of COVID. Sometimes you have to really look inside yourself and heal. feel our generation lifting each other up and lifting the world up. You know, it was really hard to choose to narrow down to seven kids. Mm -hmm. And we chose them not only for their talent, but for the stories they have to tell and the good that they are putting into the world. Um, and I'm really hopeful that people will watch it. You know, there's so much content out there right now. You know, it's really challenging to be like, look at us, look at us. I hope that people do watch and watch with their families because you know, this generation of kids, I find them to be really, really inspiring. The discussions they have are just so formidable and and grown up, you know? Mm. I marvel at, at them. And I feel yeah. like their generation takes a lot of, like, flack. You know, I feel like people talk about, like, oh, they're just on TikTok and they're just doing, like, makeup tutorials. And I just don't mm -hmm. think that that's true. I think that they're using the world of social media that quite frankly, we foisted upon them. They're using it for good. They're using it for social activism. They're using it to connect with each other. They're using it to get justice. And I'm just very moved by them. Coming up, we'll introduce you to the dance captain of the hit Broadway musical, Mean Girls. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and you're watching Broadway Profiles. With Broadway still closed right now, so many of the tens of thousands of people in this industry, they've had a pivot. This week, we're talking to Broadway performer Katie Weber, who's out with a new cookbook, Fall For You. 
I'm Katie Weber and I am a Broadway singer-dancer. I've been dancing on Broadway for the last 15 years and I am the author of the new plant-based cookbook, Fall For You. I've dedicated my entire life since I was three years old to singing, dancing, and I've had that trajectory in my head since I was a little girl. So figuring out what to do next has been extremely challenging. The idea for my cookbook came from having tons of time, first of all. Um, I've had a blog and I have been sharing healthy recipes on Instagram uh, for a while now, and I love sharing my recipes. So when I found myself with all this time and not working, I thought, well, maybe I can actually put out a product. And I started researching and I saw that you can actually self-publish a book. I did everything from creating recipes, writing recipes, editing. I edited all the photos, publishing and, and selling and packaging. I just kind of one foot in front of the other kept going and you know, I ended up with a book. It's been awesome to see people be able to actually have a product that I made in their hands, in their homes, in their kitchen with them. Um, and it's been super rewarding. We're all breathing a little easier because of the COVID vaccine, but the arts community continues to suffer from the continuing shutdowns and will for a long time. Enter the Happy Hour Guys and the Gun Hill Brewing Company. They, along with more than 30 other craft breweries across the country, are rolling out a new hazy IPA to raise money for the Actors Fund. The fund supports people in the arts community who have been hit so hard by this pandemic. In other words, the plan is simple. Drink beer, do good for Broadway. Everything I look for in a hazy IPA, it's got some citrus, it's got some grapefruit on the finish. Clearly, uh, sort of a, a, a fuller, creamier body. It's a beautiful beer. Drink and do good. Curtain up. Let's save the arts. Beer for good. Probably one of the most fun Broadway shows and touring shows is Mean Girls. It really has it all. Hilarious comedy, amazing songs, and incredible choreography. We talked to one of the members of the great ensemble, Becca Peterson, about why she's just got to dance. Hi, I'm Becca Peterson. I grew up in Carmel, Indiana. There are the four kids in my family, three girls and one brother. And uh, my mom put the girls in dance class. I did about a year of that when I was four years old, decided it wasn't for me, and played soccer. I played soccer for a while. When I was 10, my friend was in a musical theater class, and it was bring your friend to dance class day, and so I decided to join. When I walked into the studio, I never left. My dance studio at the time was owned by someone who'd been on Broadway before. So it was very musical theater based. From day one, singing and dancing all at the same time. I figured out that skill pretty quickly. And from there, started taking tap, jazz, ballet, modern, kind of all of the different styles. I think one of my biggest takeaways of growing up in the teenage years and college and then moving to New York is to surround yourself with yes and people, like find your, your crew and your people who support you and encourage you. Still to this day, that's what I try to do and it's really helped. It's kind of gotten me where I am. Of course, I've had many times where I've thought, oh, I, I, this is really hard, I wanna give up, I don't wanna do this, but um, I remember my dad telling me once on the phone, he's like, you committed to do this and this is what you want. And in this moment, it might not feel like it, but this is ultimately your dream. We did this last week, but since 2021 is still young, we're back with more New Year's resolutions from some of our favorite Broadway stars. Check it out. My New Year's resolution for 2021 is to continue to seek inner peace and reaching for unattainable goals that I deem myself unreachable, making myself uncomfortable, continuing to be creative and saying, yes, I can do it. So it's the year of the yes for me. First, I definitely want to look at my screens less in 2021. Second, um, maybe gonna eat a little bit better and work out a little bit more. I haven't gained 20, like a COVID-19, but I've definitely gained a little COVID-5. My 2021 New Year's resolution is to practice more gratitude um, for everything, big and small. <laughs> My New Year's resolution is to take more deep breaths. My New Year's resolution for 2021 
is to speak love in the public forum, heal the spiritual wounds of our divided nation, and actively imagine a future of coexistence. And that's going to do it for us. Until next time, I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is Broadway Profiles, presented by Broadway.com.